Hey guys, this is not a clickbait, this is a, that very first video about the strongest acid in the world on YouTube, fluorantimonic acid. In this video we will bust all the myths about this chemical and find the answers to such questions as what will happen if this acid gets on your skin? Can it really be stored in a Teflon container only? Does it explode on contact with water? How does it react with strong bases? Is that true that it dissolves glass quickly? And starting with the last one, I'll tell you that it doesn't. In fact, it dissolves glass so slow that instead of my special Teflon spoon, I actually used glass pipettes. In most of the cases, and nothing really happened to them, an ordinary hydrofluoric acid uh, reacts much better. Some people in the comments got confused about the acid being stored into a metal can. Uh, well, guys, many reagents are packed in this kind of cans, uh, to make them more safe to transport and to store. Uh, however, there is one more can inside the one you see that uh, contains the reagent itself. Well, it's time to open this can. So guys, one of the viewers of my channel got to the point when he told that if you need instruction on how to open a can, you'd better stay away from chemical reagents forever. The fume that came out of the can tells us that the reagent is not packed properly, so we need to be even more careful now. Fluorantimonic acid inside the can is packed in the same material the can itself was when I got it. There is a styrofoam color on the bottom. Although it seems there is some kind of damage, everything's actually in good condition, and the package that fluorantimonic acid was placed in is airtight and filled with inert gas. And it's the only thing we have left to open this package to get to the super acid. Look at these guys, this is the world's strongest acid. Fluorantimonic acid is the strongest acid in the world, and it can be contained exclusively in Teflon material. However, as we can see in this case, it's stored in the container made of some different material. This material is called perfluoralkoxyalkane. It is the copolymer of tetrafluoroethylene and perfluorether. There are is a perfluorinated group such as trifluoromethyl or pentafluoroethyl or such. The properties of these polymers are similar to those of polytetrafluoroethylene. Introducing perfluoronated group into perfluoronated chain gives thermoplastic properties to the polymer, which makes it possible to be used both in manufacturing of beakers, funnels and flasks, and for storing aggressive substances such as this acid. It also gives the polymer a semi-transparent look, which makes fluorantimonic acid seems like it opalesces. Right after I open the container with the super acid, I'll place it in a special pre-arranged airtight Teflon container for further storing.
So guys, now we need to figure out what material the gloves should be made of to use the strongest acid for the upcoming experiments. Actually, it would be nice to use silver shield gloves for age. And maybe one day I'll tell you about them, but now I prepared the most widespread types of gloves for the test, which are vinyl, acid-resistant rubber, fabric gloves, nitrile and latex. When super acid interacts with vinyl gloves, they blacken and bubble. Maybe it's not the type of gloves one should use to operate with it. Now we will test how truly resistant acid resistant gloves are under a super acid. It seems they don't get damaged that severely, but the color change is quite unsettling. Let's move on to the other types. So, these are cotton gloves with polyvinyl chloride dots. These gloves are good for holding anything except fluorantimonic acid. They are 80% cotton, and fluorantimonic acid acts very aggressively when it comes to cotton. By the way, it also burns through paper in a blink. And here is how it reacts with sawdust. Now let's test the durability of nitrile gloves. It seems they are resistant to the effects of the super acid. Oh, never mind, they are not. Fuming nitric acid is able to set latex gloves on fire, but what fuming chlorantimonic acid can do with them? A long time contact results in the color change, which clearly tells there is a chemical reaction with latex. However, unlike nitrile gloves, latex gloves turned out to be quite durable when being stretched. So, two pairs of latex gloves must be enough to protect your hands from accidental contact with fluorantimonic acid. Now let's see how the strongest acid in the world reacts with flesh. I'll use a chicken leg like you asked. Chicken skin is quite similar to human skin in terms of properties, so you might say the consequences of getting the super acid on an unprotected section of your body would be the same. 
Now it's time for the meat and for the bone. Now we will see how dangerous it is to add this acid in water. Chemistry, uh, there is such thing called magic acid. It's a mixture of fluorosulfuric acid and uh, antimony pentafluoride. The name magic acid originated after a Christmas party in 1966, uh, when a member of the Ola Club placed a paraffin candle into the acid and found that it uh, dissolved quite rapidly. Uh, that's why some people in the comments asked to dissolve a candle, expecting that fluorantimonic acid is capable of producing the same effect. Well, I did try uh, to dissolve a candle, so let's see how this played out. The paraffin candle turned out to be resistant, despite fluorantimonic acid being much stronger than magic acid. Actually, acid strength, ability to donate a proton to another molecule, doesn't always correlate with its corrosiveness. That is the ability of consuming materials. Fluorantimonic acid is so incredibly strong, it can even protonate methane. With the help of fluorantimonic acid, it's possible to complete direct benzene alkylation with methane into toluene in one step. I didn't come up with any other way to demonstrate this property, so I'll do it with the help of declaration of potassium permanganate solution. Many of you know that benzene is not oxidized by potassium permanganate solution, unlike its homologous, but oxidized to benzoic acid in acid environment. I looked up some articles on this topic and found out that despite its proceeding with toluene forming, the reaction with methane has a very low yield. However, reaching to isopentane in the homologous series of alkenes, we can see an almost 10% yield. So I took dry, freshly distilled benzene and added some fluorantimonic acid to it. We can see yellow color forming right away. This precipitate is diphenyl tetrafluorantimonic acid. If we add the mixture we got to potassium permanganate solution, we will not notice any changes.
if we add isopentane or a mixture of isopentane and benzene, nothing really changes either. But now I'll put the mixture of isopentane and benzene with fluorantimonic acid in the center test tube, and we will find out whether the color of potassium permanganate solution will change in this case. To be honest, I expected to see either no reaction at all or the discoloring of the solution, so I was surprised by a quick change from a pink to yellow-orange color. Nevertheless, it indicates the reaction of isopentane with benzene in the presence of fluorantimonic acid, uh, as no other combinations of these reagents had any result. Now let's see how fluorantimonic acid reacts with active metals. The first one will be magnesium. As we can see, magnesium reacts with fluorantimonic acid, producing hydrogen in the process. Let's drop some acid on a sodium surface. And here is some on a potassium surface. Uh, sometimes it happens that you need uh, to buy some chemical reagent uh, that must be stored at low temperature. In this case, supplier companies uh, pack them in a thermal box made of styrofoam, and some gel refrigerant packs are laid around them in order to maintain low temperatures. So let's take a look at this. It's still cold. Well, I have two such regions right now. We won't need the first one today. I'll make a separate video about it in the future. But we do need this one right now. This box uh, contains a very strong base, third butyl lithium. And as you might have noticed, it's also packed in the cans. One, two, three. And four. Well, guys, now we'll try to add a very strong base to a very strong acid. Terbutyl lithium is a pyrophoric substance, and I'll show you how extremely dangerous it is in a separate video. But for now, let's take our reagent out of the can.
As you might notice, it's packed inside in the same material fluor antimony as it was, and there is also an additional pack with a protective atmosphere. Terbutal lithium fills a 100 ml bottle by one quarter. The rest of it is occupied by inert gas. It's done for a safer reagent collecting. A syringe with this reagent is filled through a specific long needle, that unfortunately I couldn't prepare for the shooting, so I'll use a regular one. Turbutyl film must always be collected only either in an inner gas flow or in a special glove box. I'll make three holes in this white self-sealing silicon membrane. Two holes will be used for argon circulation, and I will use the third one to collect one milliliter of the third butyl lithium solution in pentane. If nothing ignites while you're filling a syringe with the terbutyl lithium solution, you are doing everything right. So, let's mix very strong base and extremely strong acid. I don't actually like base anymore. And here comes another strong base and an extremely strong alkali. This is cesium hydroxide. And here is one more quite interesting experiment. Roughly speaking, the sodium in liquid ammonia solution carries three electrons, and if we assume that, on the other hand, fluorantimonic acid carries three protons, and mix sodium in liquid ammonia solution with fluorantimonic acid, we should get the reaction between electrons and protons. That will supposedly lead to hydrogen forming. Well, let's find out if that's what really happens. The wooden splint went out. What do you think this gas was? Was it hydrogen or hydrogen fluoride or ammonia or something else? Sorry guys, I can't let you go without showing you this lovely explosive reaction between this acid and a strong base, which is sodium hydride. So 
guys, I hope I satisfied your curiosity about these chemicals. Uh, please do not mistake acid strength uh, with its corrosiveness. They do much in some cases as well as uh, they don't some others. So, hope you really enjoyed. Uh, leave a comment, thumbs up, Patreon maybe if you want to help me buy chemicals and equipment. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos about exotic chemicals and really cool chemical reactions. See you in the next video.